Hi, I thought I'd express my opinion on something that's been much of a concern to me lately, and it has to do with uh, corporate op operations in the United States. Private corporations have long been understood as being very much like totalitarian states. They combine in them, in their formation and operations, uh, a judicial set of duties, a legislative set of duties, right? They make, they make laws, and they have executive powers, right? We call one the leader of each of these uh, tyrannies. Uh, the main tyrant, as a matter of fact, would be the CEO. So most of them are set up like that. And this person uh, gives orders and it goes on down through to everyone uh, in this hierarchy. If anyone says anything out of the way or they don't agree with things, then uh, they're, they're free to walk, right? Which is not quite a freedom because it can impact their income, uh, the food and, and material life that they have and their home and everything. Now, it's been generally observed over a long period of time that they are practically unaccountable to anyone or anything, internally or externally. They make a decision, that's it, they get to do it. A lot of their operations are secret, right? They are private corporations. They are secret. They don't have to divulge anything. Cranking something out of them, even when they have these large uh, um, uh, uh, lawsuits against them sometimes, um, is very difficult just to make that happen. These corporations are titanic in scale. It's not a mom-and-pop operation, but they do affect mom-and-pop operations directly. In fact, they can destroy them, and we've seen that happen in towns and villages all across the United States, not to say around the world. They not only operate in local areas, but have crossed state boundaries in the United States, straddled the nation, you can see examples of them all over the place, and have been and are increasing in operations across national borders around the world. They're all over the place. They were created... Um, as an organization that superseded the state and national trusts of the early 20th, 20th century. You heard about Teddy Roosevelt trust busting, right? Uh, as quickly as those trusts were destroyed, these corporations came into being. It was kind of like whack-a-mole, but considering what they have created or doing and are capable of, it would be better described as whack-a-monster. In the place of the trust, these corporations have been benighted with the powers of personhood by the courts. Nobody made a law about this. Nobody said, oh, let's vote on this. It all went through court decisions that corporations were provided personhood. Now, none of the basis for corporations being considered persons is based in, in legislation, as I just mentioned. All done by the courts. Corporations resemble super persons, but not like Superman. Uh, they're able to live forever, for example. They're immortal. Uh, they can create new corporations, poof, or they can absorb others into themselves, right? Okay? Their dealings are internal and secret, and that itself is protected and enshrined by law. Everything's secret, right? Uh, we've seen a lot of these uh, suits against them. For example, the opioid manufacturers, right? They have large, they're going to pay out their, the states are making a settle, settlement with them for $26 billion. It turns out that many corporations, when they get these settlements, if they're, even if their fines and levies are or whatever, they can charge it as cost of doing business and they can take it off their taxes. That's quite amazing. So uh, there, there's a benefit for uh, hurting people in that one example. Okay? So, now, corporations have been seen to routinely disrupt the actual market, what is imagined as the actual market economy, uh, by tacit agreements among themselves, to set prices, whether purposefully or inadvertently, it just so happens they all have the same price, right? For products that are essentially indistinguishable from each other, they're all becoming like commodities, right? Everybody manufactures the same device. Um, how are you going to differentiate between them? Well, you can't because they're all made with the same parts from the same um, suppliers and you end up with the same product. So we end up with these wild advertisements that we see on television to sell our products rather than actually letting us know what's specifically more important or better about their product than the all competition. And that's because they're essentially not. They're all essentially the same. Um, we can see this in, in some uh, um, products where they meet the same stringent guidelines and they have the same speeds or whatever, or they use energy at the same rate. So that's, that's quite interesting. 
uh, at least to me. On occasion, they, they work together to in, in agreement to operate in certain parts of the world and to perform certain types of work. Sometimes they cooperate with each other. They're supposed to be competing with each other, right? But they, they, they deeply cooperate with each other. Uh, they're able to move money from one country to no other in a blink of an eye, literally, at speed of light, um, and profit at each exchange. Many of them not only control banks by having large investments in them, but they've formed banks of their own. Some of them have ended up, these corporations have they not quite abandoned what they were making, but nobody knows quite what they're making anymore. But we do know that in several of these, or, these uh, corporations, they're making much more money out of their financial transactions than out of the things that uh, you would think that they were making. Um, in many cases, these corporations maintain some several banks, let's say several, three banks, and uh, some of them, in my example with the three banks, one dedicated to internal transactions, one dedicated to external transactions, and uh, others to um, uh, just general business, okay, like a bank bank. Competition not only has been undermined in many cases, it's, it's been destroyed. You can't compete with these people. There's no way it's going to happen. They, they, they are not supposed to create money, but when you have an organization transferring money back and forth and, and doing that, they're creating money at every step of the way. Now, what seems to be competition in this operation is business as usual for these large corporate entities who real, whose real goals are secret and, and whose ultimate purpose in being seems to be unknown. It, it's kind of lost in the past, right? Um, their sheer size and activities have pushed them into an arena where they can actually participate in writing legislation. That's right. That is, they write the laws of the land. They've got people in there lobbying and sitting down and providing text and verbiage and everything to what goes in the law. Because it's easier to do because they know what's going on, right? <laughs> they know what's going on. We'll let them write the law and just put it in the law and then they can obey the law that they made. You know, And uh, so this work is done in favor, of course, of their own interests and often in complete disregard for their employees and anyone living in the areas in which they hold sway or carry out their operations. It's all for them. They are tyrannical systems, these corporations, that have no claim, really, for legitimacy. They got it from the court. Yeah, you could do that, right? And of which we have no need in our current society. We need competition. We're going to have a market economy, etc. We're going to be free people. And we don't need something like this pushing its way and attempting to do things they're not supposed to, which is affect our national direction and take away uh, from the exercise of our own personal rights, liberties, and freedoms that we have. Our nation should have one government for the people, by the people, and of the people. And having these avaricious hulks dominating the economy has harmed development for decades in the United States and has led to hunger, lack of opportunity, poverty, and amassing of fortunes beyond the scope of anything ever seen before in the history of the entire world by individuals and these corporate entities that take that money and the next step is apparently disappearing it into more some fictional paper. I mean, we're seeing the money being accumulated by these companies. Their stock goes up, the money goes somewhere else. And we're not seeing additional jobs. We're not seeing new products. We're not seeing um, our infrastructure being taken care of, which they're all benefiting, benefiting from. Uh, we're not seeing any. <clears throat> we're not even see what what seeing some new types of entertainment or anything. Any new types of art going on? All that stuff. I don't know. Schools are so expensive that you can hardly send the kids to them, especially as they get into the higher grades. Now. They sock this money away for some day that apparently is not going to come. And only they believe it's going to come. There's always some time in the future. One day, three days, two weeks, six months, a year, five years, 20-year plans. 20-year plans. 30-year plans. That's pretty amazing. They have become a siphon from the economy. So they're taking the money out of the economy. Now, what do they do with it? Um... Each individual injection of cash later, like say they, they take the money out, it's gone, it's floating around. There are right now over three hundred trillion dollars apparently in futures and derivatives in the derivatives market floating around out there. Three hundred trillion dot over three hundred trillion. And it could be more at this point because I was looking at that like from like five years ago. Um 
Now, the, the, they take the cash, right? And now it's out of the economy and suddenly inflation sets in and the, the government's got to do something and inject cash and save this guy and save that guy. So what happens? It looks like it's good for a couple of days. The pressure's off, right? And, but then the normal process that's been established right now just takes that extra money right out of the system and puts it back into that fantasy world where they are looking for the numbers to increase and the numbers aren't really connected with anything at all. And they use that money, whatever they have, that they've accumulated, often for uh, hideous hidden agendas. And in the end, what are those hideous agendas creating? What are we seeing in the world today? We're seeing want, people not having the basics for living, uh, people starving, and war. Uh, not quite, uh, it may be profitable for some, but it is certainly not productive for the rest of us. Now, they not only control the media in addition to all this other work, they control and own all the large media outlets. So, you're, so everything you're seeing is coming out based on supporting what they're doing. Now as noted earlier, they actually help to write the laws that are then enforced by the government on the rest of us. Not on them, they're the laws are enforced on us. They work to grant themselves advantages as individual corporations, and as a group when necessary, they have groups that work together to represent themselves to the government staff. And those folks are listening to them and acting upon them. They're able to flee jurisdictions by simply moving money out of an area or region instantaneously. You don't want to do business with us? Okay. And they depart and all the money goes. So people are very reluctant to do anything, to ask them to do anything. Not, force them to do anything, but not even ask them to do something because you don't want to make them unhappy. They might leave. Right? There is little or no leeway for local, state, and even national governments to deal with these corporations. And what is their, what, are, what are they doing? It's not quite clear. Each individual one has their own thing that they're doing. And of course, they're not going to tell you about it because it's secret. <clears throat> the main goal, which once seemed to be, which once seemed to be innovation, has devolved solely to profit for profit's sake. They're just trying to make the money, and then what do you do with all that cash? You reinvest it. No, that takes too long. We can put it in a derivative over here. And this guy that I know in Cleveland says, in three weeks, we'll double our money. And they do that, and then the money goes to New York and Chicago. And does anybody ever take it out? I don't know. Um, their control is not only over the media, but the advertising industry as well, and the entertainment industry. Okay? All of that's coming through to us from one location so that they can enjoy themselves in the background for this seemingly meaningless set of circumstances. Now, <clears throat> in the past, it's been called the loose affiliation of millionaires and billionaires, but it's actually a network of private tyrannies that now currently encompass the world. And they may be broken up into smaller groups and everything like the Chevels in Korea and whatever is going on there in, in, in Europe and uh, Africa and Japan. Uh, but this is now a global thing going on here. Global thing. There's a reason that they so strongly and work hard to stay close to government and urgently try to influence it. And it's because the government is still answerable to and can be influenced by the people who live under it. And that's us. That's you and I and everyone. We can do that. There is a strong, this is a strong and main reason for the bias we see against government and the media right now. Oh, the government's bad. Can you imagine this sort of advertising, this sort of, uh, um, this sort of entertainment, this sort of news media coverage during World War II, World War I, or during the Civil War? Can you, uh, if, we, if you recall our history, right, and you were given the opportunity to look at it, no matter whether it's flawed or not. Can you imagine any of that going on back then? I can't. So it's really attacking um, people directly. Now, because their corporate tyrannies have devolved their power from the government, they realize, through the courts, they realize that just as easily as it was created, the whole thing could be reversed, just like that. It's gone. Can't do it anymore, gotta do something else. 
then they would actually actually have to do some real work, not only cleaning up the mess that they caused and the, the, the things, the strange things that they're doing, they would actually have to go and create some new products for us that we can gladly and happily manufacture and make and sell to each other and have a nice time. So now let's take a look at, for example, let's take a look at some secret violent gangs of criminals who act on their own behalf are illegal to form and operate in the United States and around the world. You just can't do that. People come looking for you. The agents come looking for you. They want to get the law on them. Now it's a small step to include the present framework that corporations have. They've come to fill this strange vacuum that they themselves created in our society. And breaking them up so that the markets and competition uh, with reasonable controls included can return to the United States and the rest of the world will benefit us all. I mentioned reasonable controls because they were in place during the late 1930s, the 1940s, and 1950s. And during that time, things were pretty much solid. But beginning in the 1960s, there were none of the bubbles in real estate before that. Power, resources, banking, manufacturing, and others that are become, they're becoming commonplace, right? We've got the things going on right now that are spiraling out of price. Why is that? Uh, they're being dealt with... Um, by the government bailouts. The corporations haven't had to change their ways and show in no indication, even within the framework, that dominant framework that they formed, they've shown no indication that they're going to change at all because they know the government at this time, see, the dysfunction has gone too far. They know the government will reward them for causing what they've done, undue hardship, inflicting painful economic situations on individuals and families and communities and fostering hunger in the United States by giving them lots and lots of money. Here's the money, go fix what you broke. And they're not fixing what they broke. Again, that money comes to them, settles out whatever little thing, and everything else is going into that cycle where it just doesn't do anything. It's out of circulation. It's frozen. Their focus, the corporation's focus, has been on influencing, diverting, and in some cases destroying portions of the federal government because even state governments in many foreign nations can be influenced and controlled very easily. You can see them getting in there all the time, taking over certain aspects like from a foreign nation of their economy or states in the United States doing something very strange for a particular corporation that they want to come in there uh, that ends up not to their advantage. Uh, now, the federal government, however, is extremely large and maintains, though it seems not to use it all that much, to, to uh, ability to curtail their greedy excursions across the country and into foreign nations. We see their machinations as they try to drive certain decisions and powers down, lower, to the state level. And one of the hands of the uh, government and out of the hands of the federal government agencies that they were in. An example of this is pollution regulation. Now, many states operate now their own environment protection agencies. Isn't that great? Oh, that's so wonderful. They're all concerned about the environment, right? Now, let's uh, uh, take a look at something. They're granted, these states were granted these abilities by the United States of America, by the federal government, to rule on federally mandated environmental rules simply by stating that having the EPA do it would be redundant in their state. So they set up their own organization. Now, using Michigan as an example, this has gotten so far out of hand that deadly chemicals right now, they're in the water, and they're showing up in the drinking water. The Great Lakes are at risk with the movement of oil from, from, in, from into Canada via underwater pipelines. There's a network of aging sites, a proliferation of gas and coal-powered electricity uh, plants, um, poor air quality, and the ridiculous situation where Miss Michigan actually imports... Did you know this? Michigan imports garbage from Canada, which I believe that's the second largest country in the world, right? So they don't have room to deal with their own trash. I've even heard people say it's too cold up there, so they bring it to Michigan. Let me tell you about Michigan. Michigan's a cold place, all right? All right. But in any case, um, now, they place that trash in Michigan landfills, and these landfills are poisoning the soil, poisoning the water, and the very air around them for a large area. They're causing illness and poor quality of life for a large portion of Michigan residents. But it's all legal, and it's all confined to the decision-making process of one state, of one department, and one department within the department, 
which is overseeing another department, which is actually doing the department work. It's pretty interesting. Now, these seemingly common sense decisions, right, make government smaller, have turned out to subject citizens to dangerous poisons and have allowed even middle-sized businesses to lobby for and gain reversals and processes that had been stopped and reversed. And are now, because of that, are increasing levels of pollution we see in the United States. Recently in Michigan, some of these businesses were pushing to ensure that deadly cancerous chemicals that have been placed in the waters and soil of Michigan by irresponsible and ignorant corporations, right? They didn't know everything, but they said they did. Um, this should be the problem of local water companies. The water companies should get the poisons out of the water before they deliver them to someone's house. Uh, okay. What this is, is an example of private profit and public liability. These, that is, that the, the, the corporations are pushing the, the responsibility and financial burden under the very people that they've hurt so incredibly. They have developed the thing privately. They did paid for everything they needed to market it, sell it to everybody. They made plenty of profits, and then they directed it into the paper we were talking about uh, and took that cash and, and all that work out of the economy. And now it's time to clean it up, and they say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not our problem. It already left our facility. So, and if it's going into somebody's house, it's the person's, it's the company's problem that is delivering the water. Now, that company, if if they were to accept this responsibility, would pass the bills on to all the people that have to pay for their water to get it put in their house. Otherwise, they're going to get poisoned. Now, are they going to get the poison anyway? Don't know. Can't tell. Is this going to work? Is, do you think that's going to work here in Michigan? where again you have a large department that's playing the role of the EPA that doesn't oversee them quite in any way and goes down into and, and is devolved onto the choices of a, uh, a few individuals who are going to make that call for this problem which is worth hundreds of millions of dollars and lots of work and help. So anyway, now the corporations all still in favor of some parts of federal government. Of course, they're not anti-government. They would never actually say that. Like the procurement branch, they very much like the procurement branch to buy things from them. That's a good way you get a procurement with the federal government. You're set, right? Now, they also are interested in those parts of the government that have proven the ability to funnel money to them for things that don't have anything to do with that particular department does, but because they pass some rule or they've applied to some judge who has okayed the thing, then money starts going probably, probably where it's not supposed to. Now, in my opinion, none of this structural behavior by these corporations and the corporations themselves can be tolerated anymore. From a business standpoint, from a personal standpoint, if uh, somebody interested in the politics, the political standpoint, from a human standpoint, from an international standpoint, from an American standpoint, all of these things, the corporations are just not working out. It can't be tolerated anymore. That's my opinion. And it's not a case of romance for these corporations. We've seen them all on television depicted by the media and the advertising agencies that they control as being wonderful and romantic and everything like that and the nation is not being ruled by a secretly ruled by a dashing band of robber barons and pirates that's not happening it's not a case of the super intelligent bowing to their own responsibilities of making all the decisions on our behalf because we can't do it that's not happening they want you to think about that they want me to believe that that is the general impression we're receiving. But these corporations are secretive. We really don't know what's going on inside them. All we know when we look at them is they apparently are not responsible for anything they do, that they make an enormous amount of cash and no one knows where it goes, and that profit is everything. And if you speak against them and you're internal, you're out. And if you're external, you're a troublemaker. Is that the American way? Not in my mind. <laughs> These corporations are secretive and tyrannical. We've already established that. And they're doing that for a reason. Now, this has gone on quite long enough. Don't you think?